Hey everyone, welcome. We want to clear up some misconceptions that are out there about us, and I just want to clear this up. I've been saying the same stuff over and over for years. I get tired of people saying cashews aren't raw, rice paper isn't raw, miso soup isn't raw. We've said this from the beginning. Kara and I are not extremists, okay? We don't live an extreme lifestyle. We live a relatively healthy lifestyle. Usually that means eating foods found in nature, as close to nature as you can find it within reason and having a good time with life. We are not totally raw food. We eat out once in a while. Yeah, we go to restaurants. We have some once in a while. We go to a Thai restaurant or a Mexican restaurant or whatever. We don't eat animal products, but you know, so we have some rice oh. or some uh, a potato of some kind or cooked vegetables. Oh. We are not 100%. We're not extremists. We don't care about that stuff. We are mainly raw. You know what? The word vegan is just just causing so much ridiculous stuff nowadays anyway. So I, I don't even want to use the word vegan. We don't like the eating or killing of animals. That's not what this is about. This is about people that are fighting with each other about diet and what to eat and what not to eat. We don't want to get caught up in that. We just want to be healthy and happy and- And not fanatical about anything. That's right. always been my motto. Right, right. So I guess if you want to label us, we are mainly raw plant-based whole food people with a tiny bit of cooking, but not much. Maybe some oatmeal or beans once in a while. You know, you don't have to eat at a raw food restaurant to be healthy. You can eat anywhere and I'm going to show you how. You might actually see us eating some cooked food or some cheesecake or <gasps> which isn't actually vegan, is it? <laughs> but for a reason though, chefs are constantly checking out each other's stuff for ideas. We love culinary artwork. You can see from our cookbook, we're artists. We like to create art. We like to make life beautiful. And we, just like any other company out there, like, you know, BMW buys Mercedes to take them apart so they can see what what makes them tick and we do the same thing we go to fancy restaurants we get food that we well let's see what this tastes like and we have to see what it tastes like not just the presentation of it but how it tastes and then we go hmm how can we get this taste but with healthy plant-based versions of it so you know it's like analyzing the competition in my defense you know, I just take the tiniest yeah. little nibble. Yeah, it doesn't take her much. She takes one tiny little, like a tip of her tongue. Now, and you'll never see me eating anything with eggs or an egg. That's just so yeah. gross, disgusting and, to me. But anyways, I just and, to and, and we don't try anything with beef or pork, like no animals that walk around or anything. You know, we take pictures of all the presentations of how these great, because we're in a city here where some of the best food in the world, the best chefs, the best gourmet restaurants are here in Las Vegas. Some of the like five star, what do they call? Um, Michelin, right? Michelin, yeah. So we like to go to see what the big deal is and see how they present their food and it gives us inspiration and ideas. You know, 30 years ago when I opened my raw restaurant, 95% of the population is like, what's raw? They didn't even understand it. So I've been hearing this for 30 years, you know, out of like 900 amazing raw ingredients we had in our restaurant. There's always that one person on a regular basis coming up to us saying, maple syrup isn't raw. I know, I know. I know maple syrup's not raw. I know the cashews aren't raw. Let's, can we focus on something else? I thought being vegan or raw or plant-based means that you are a more in tune, genteel type of person. You don't like harming or causing waves. And I, I, that's what I, you know, that's what I am. I thought that's how, what those people are like, but it seems the, the tension and the arguing and bickering yeah, online yeah, has know. never been more through the roof with these angry vegans and ah, oh, you're not this, you're not, it's you know like what? so. Uh, I'll, I'll bet a lot of those people are not 100% no raw. Shit. Nobody's 100%. No, but the yet they're that, acting so the, militant about yeah, this. The people that say that, I'll bet you they're just trying to find something to find a crack in the exact that's what it flour. was with us that's what those people that were bringing that to our attention they weren't raw but they were like trying to bring yeah show 
show attention to that little crack. You're not perfect. We yet. know <laughs> cashews aren't raw, but, but cashews way, are the creamiest when the creamiest perfect nut I use for some of my ingredients so far that way, I can find. There is a raw cashew that you can buy at Matt Monarch's site. They're raw. They're actually raw, and nobody knows about that. I, and I'll put the link down below. If you really want 100% raw cashews, there you go. They do exist if you do want them. So there. <laughs> Anyway, uh, and cashews are not nuts. They're the seed of a droop. They're not even a legume. So. Yeah, you know, a couple of years ago, I did a Facebook post saying I no longer refer to myself vegan or raw, though I eat my vegan food raw, because these angry vegans and raw <laughs> fooders that are on YouTube yeah. who were in diapers when I was killing myself in my raw restaurant, hearing this, you know, little slack, they've grown up now and have completely, we were our beautiful little group in our vegan raw restaurant. It was uh, Stephen uh, uh, Adler. Adler. It was Stephen Adler, Jeremy Saffron, Brian Lucas, uh, Stephen Arland, David, was, Wolf. Uh, David Wolf. We were the okay. We were all the pioneers, and we all would congregate in my restaurant. There was no arguing or bickering. We would put our heads together and try and think of ways to share this with the masses. How to break. Um, Cup, create more exciting yeah. recipes. It wasn't bigger, bigger. You're better. I'm better than you. Yeah. You're not good. That's not raw. Where did all these angry, how did these little children, these young vegans that were children when the adults were creating this movement, how did they get so angry, hostile, accusatory, and everything well, else? How did that happen? Because you know what? Us pioneers, we're still the same tranquil, calm <laughs> pioneers we always yeah. were. And we're looking and talking. Remember the two guys from Sun Warrior and the other guys came over? And we're, we're all calm and yeah. caring and cool and... Where did these angry well, vegans, of, how did they a lot of them are get their, so angry? A lot yeah. of them are in their 20s, they're young, they've got all this energy, they, they, they want to try something and they hope it makes them instantly this perfect person and they, and they eat all this sugar and fruit juice and they're fruitarians and you know, they, they're not, and then they start having not the perfect results because they're, well, you know, it's all about sugar. Sure, about, that's true. They're, they're, they're making it so difficult. We were in our 20s too, 30 years ago, all the people we just, I just named, we were I, you know, I think the internet has a lot to do. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because the, the anonymity where it, people can attack yeah. you. But anyway, let me say something else real quick. Uh, I don't want to rant on too, too long about that. The other thing is, um, I want to clear up, this is really important. We never claim to be all natural. That's impossible with anybody in the modern world. We do not and have never claimed to be all natural. What we do is we show people how to be healthy despite exposure to unnatural substances in the modern world, which is a lot more realistic than trying to be this naked hippie living in the woods in perfect clean air and perfect clean water. And that doesn't exist. It doesn't exist anymore. All the air is polluted. The water is polluted. Everything's polluted. You have to drive a car. You have to have a computer. You're your home is full of carpeting and formaldehyde and blah 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 blah. The, you know anybody who set who tries to pigeonhole something like that, it, it's or change it, it's, it's ridiculous. You cannot be all natural now. It's it's ridiculous. Not to mention, I like to color my hair and I like wearing makeup. That's who I am. I'm not telling other it's people it's, don't wear makeup. Yeah. I just prefer to wear a little makeup. You know, I said in another video, if you go to these tribal cultures around the world in South America and Africa and Australia, wherever, where they're you know they're natural right they're all natural and they paint their bodies full of paint and they paint their hair they not, deform their bodies and they put these iron rings on their neck and everything and like weird things that's not natural but they do it and they're considered natural so you know being an artistic expression is, is there's nothing wrong with that anyway so the point is Yes, we are, and just like everybody else in the world, we're exposed to unnatural substances, but we show you how realistically to exist in the modern world with exposure to unnatural substances and still be healthy as much as possible. So it's actually better that we have some more unnatural substances that we are exposed to because if we can be okay with that or we can be healthy then that is like, it's like a scientific experiment. Then it's possible to be healthy long term 
as long as your body is cleansing itself on a regular basis and it's healthy and it's detoxing and, and, and chelating and all that stuff, we show you how you can still do all that stuff and still be healthy. And, then, and that's what we're about. So anybody who tries to attack us, uh, do not try to pigeonhole us as to ever having said we're all natural because we never said that. So I think it's a lot better that there are people out there like us that show people how you can still be healthy despite a lot of the things that people are going to uh, are not going to stop you know like a lot of you you're, you're not going to stop driving a car which is full of plastic fumes and toxic gases and you're not going to be stop living in a house that's full of formaldehyde and in the walls and the particle board and the the carpeting and the drapes and the plastic bottles that people drink out of and the, and the you know the computers and all the EMF and the fumes and uh, I can go on and on the, the people detergents put in, that you're forced to smell when you're in line yeah people that from you know, other what, people's clothes what, what, I mean it's everywhere what you put what you wash your hair with what you brush your teeth with what you it's on and on I mean it's endless so we show you how to be healthy despite exposure to that. And I think that's more practical, it's more important, and it's more valuable to people for, for that. So totally. I just wanted to clear this up that, you know, we never claim to be or want to be uh, all natural naked hippies living in the... In but you'll the never, right, but you'll never catch us in a restaurant eating at meat. I, I, and this is the third thing I want to clear up. Uh, I, I am not saying, yeah, it's, oh, oh, that means it's okay to just go crazy and go to restaurants and eat whatever you want because Marcus and Kara said it's okay. No, what I'm saying is if you have a health, there's different levels of, of, of healing. There, the first thing is if you have a serious health problem and you want to help get rid of it, we suggest, we don't, we don't have to do anything we do, but our suggestion is that's when you go 100% raw as much as possible and you only do green, non-sweet things as much as possible. You do your cleansing, you do the, all the stuff that I say in Heal Yourself 101, you stick to it 100% until you are healed, until you are clean, until you are optimally living at full potential. Once you're at that, then you can maybe go to a Thai restaurant once in a while or, you know, whatever, and, and go have a little bit of fun. Um, but if you are dealing with a serious medical health issue, the 100% raw, I believe, the, our opinion, is the way to go at that point. Then you can ease into the other stuff a little bit. But the, the, here's my thing. When you do something that you know you're not supposed to, my suggestion is to notice how you feel three hours later or the next morning. Do you have puffiness under your eyes? Do you get a sugar crash? Are you tired afterwards? Do you feel not as clear or energetic the next morning or the next day? Or do you feel like you're constipated? Do you feel like you're just not mm, you know, as clear and free? So if you're doing things that you know are not like you know, 100 percent raw, pay attention to it. If you start eating a lot of cooked food, compare how you feel with when you were eating 100% raw. And I'm not talking about just fruits and sweet stuff. I'm talking about a balance of greens and fruits and nuts, nuts and, and seeds and all that mm. stuff. Um, really pay attention, be your own scientist. We're just giving you a, a jump start here. And then you have to take over from there and see how you feel uh, and, and really be honest with yourself. Can you add, um, how come some people are doing videos where they say, oh, I feel so much better after I, 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 I was vegan, but I feel so much better after I started eating meat. What happens when you eat meat? Remember you were telling yeah, me Yeah, I made how? a video about that. Oh, I, okay. I listed all the reasons why oh. and the different people and what categories they fall under. That, by the way, if you want to see that video, that's right here. So anyway, so we just wanted to clear that up. Um, you know, we, we are a lot more, I think, realistic, even though we like to... You know, we're from California, we're Hollywood people. We like to dress up fancy and, and have, you know, like if you mix a, a, surf, a surfer guy with a Hollywood actress and a, we like costumes, we like lighting and makeup and Hollywood fancy fluffy, you know, we're, we're, we're flashy, we, that's us, that's our style. We like to be flamboyant, whatever the word is. We're not like, let you know, uh, um, uh, you Flame. know. Yeah. Also, I wanted to add, um, the reason I am 99.9% .9 raw is because, number one, I don't want to contribute to the atrocities that are going on by eating meat. And number two, I feel amazing.
amazing at being raw. I don't know how come other people are having problems with it, but I have been raw mostly on, but off and on since I, my early 20s and uh, 50 now. Energy through the roof. I could do cartwheels. I have no aches and pains in my body. Um, I feel like I did when I was 16. I think that's a big part of it is, you know, quit obsessing on people's, the tiny stuff, like looking at people's faces with a magnifying glass, like how many wrinkles someone does have or doesn't have, like, and, and what you think they're doing. Stop obsessing about that stuff. Look at the whole picture. Look at the body. Look at the energy. Look at the fact that we haven't been sick in 20 years. We don't even know what it's like to be sick anymore. That's what it's about. Marcus it's told not. me, he said, well, you know, somebody commented that you're looking old. Kara looks old in her face. And I go, uh, I am 50. <laughs> But more important is not how you look, it's how you feel. Right, right. I feel amazing. I notice when I walk into somewhere, I see girls go, and everyone turns and stares. I did confront one girl once. I'm like, what are you looking at? She goes, oh no, we were just talking about your stomach, your abs. You know, it's like the body is so important. So. I, you know, pretty soon it's, I'm just going to not even, I'm going to stop wearing makeup and stop doing my hair. And then they're going to go, oh my God, what's wrong? I mean, you can't win. And I've realized yeah, that yeah. you can't win. Like the famous Britney song. She's too fat. She's too thin. Either I'm too big or <laughs> I'm too thin. Oh my God, Karen's yeah. falling off. Whatever. So anyway, so I just wanted to say, oh, um, so what, so if you want to classify us, we are mainly whole food, plant-based, raw people that's mainly what we are and we like to go you know we travel the world and we like to eat in restaurants and atmosphere the atmosphere to, to me is just as important as the food that comes to you I mean sometimes I go and I barely eat anything and we study culinary art and try to figure out how we can do it ourselves in a, in a healthier way so uh, anyway we just want people to be free to live their lives in a healthier, happier way. And we try, we can give you suggestions. You don't have to be like us. We're not saying you have to do anything we do. We don't want you to be exactly like us because we're unique. We want to be us. We don't want copies of us out there. We want you to be you. We want you to be unique in your own way. So just let us inspire you, but you do whatever it is you do in your own way. When we began this movement 30 years ago, I had no idea I was going to be under World War III 30 years later over it with my fellow people. Aren't we on the same team? Can we all to get along? But we're on the same team. Why are we arguing with each other when we could be taking that energy and guiding meat eaters into veganism? Oh, that 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 will last. That thing will go on forever. <laughs> that that battle, that war is never going to end. So it doesn't matter. Um, that's it. We just wanted you just to. <sighs> to just, uh, you know, enjoy life, no. chill, <laughs> and we're just trying to... Well, regardless of what happens, I will always stand, you know, steadfast in my beliefs, and nobody can change what I say. I just feel sad that my fellow vegans are, you know, at such war with each other, right. at odds with each other. It's just sad. So... There you go. That's us for today. We decided to clear up some misconceptions that people have. Uh, we are not extremists. Yeah, we might have a spoonful of oil once in a while in our salads. Oh my God. We eat some olive oil and coconut oil, which other people say, don't do that. That's bad. It's evil. We don't drink the stuff. It's not like we have that much that it makes a difference. I uh, love oil in my salad. So I'm not going like, to stop, but I don't put it. And yes, we use cashews and, 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 and maple syrup and, and rice paper and yeah, rice. anything else you want to nitpick about. Oh my God. Well, classify us however you want. That's who we are. And I think we're pretty darn healthy and we like to inspire you as, you know, as much as realistically possible. And that's it. So we'll see you in the next video and hopefully a lot of you can try out just some of what we're saying and it'll help your life in some way because that's what it's about is to inspire you even if you do just a fraction of this it's that much better than not doing it so we'll see you in the next video and uh stay healthy as much as you can and happy because that's what it's about see you around at the healthy life .com. Bye. <laughs>
Marcus, how do we get out? <laughs> Hello? Oops. Talk to me. I need to go to the bathroom. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Oops.